Hey, Liam, Simon said. Put some of these up, will you? He tossed me a bag of fake spider webs. People had started to arrive for the party, so we were just trying to get the last of the decorations up in my friend Leighton's backyard. The place was already looking pretty good, but I'd been distracted ever since our trip to the Halloween store. I was starting to think I was going nuts, that something was really wrong with my brain. But I nodded at Simon, ripped open the plastic bag of spider webs, and reached inside. Something stung my hand, and I yanked it out, dropping the bag. A large black spider crouched on the back of my hand. A real spider, not one of those fake plastic ones that come with the spider webs. I swept it to the ground and stomped on it. As I was looking at the ground, I saw three more spiders crawl out of the bag with the spider webs. I kicked one of them over with the toe of my shoe, noticing the red hourglass on its underside. I stomped on the three remaining spiders and then looked at my hand. I could see two little fang marks, and the area around the bite was already starting to swell. Shit, I said. Black widows? I hustled inside through the back door. In the kitchen, I washed the bite with soap and water. While I was looking at my phone, researching what to do about a black widow bite, I heard a commotion from outside. It was a swell of excited laughter from the dozen or so partygoers who'd arrived. I looked out the kitchen window and saw three jack-o'-lanterns hopping around in the yard. My friends Daniela, Victor, and Simon stood near the garage, watching as Leighton and the others laughed at the three ambulatory pumpkins. My gaze dropped to my throbbing hand as the implications seated themselves in my stomach like the tip of a dagger. I ran out of the house and looked toward where Simon had set up the stack of three jack-o'-lanterns he'd gotten at the Halloween store not an hour earlier. They were gone. These decorations are crazy, Leighton said, laughing as he bent down to touch one. No! I screamed, but it was too late. The sun was little more than a fading memory on the western horizon as we pulled into the shopping center parking space. My friend Victor, tall and lanky with a crooked smile and black hair, put the Explorer in park and killed the engine. Let's get spooky, he said. Victor's girlfriend, Daniela, who sat in the front passenger seat, howled like a werewolf. She had a big black wig on and a skimpy witch costume. She was the only one of the four of us who was dressed up. My friend, Simon, a blonde-haired 20-year-old sitting in the back with me, looked over with a grin on his face. You ready? I smiled weakly. Yeah. As we got out of the vehicle, I felt a wave of nausea roll through me. Breathing through my nose, I walked to the back of the vehicle and started toward our destination, the Spectre Halloween store. My friends caught up with me quickly because I was walking slowly. Ever since having a brain tumor removed two weeks earlier, I'd been a little unsteady on my feet. It was one of the many unpleasant side effects of having brain surgery that I was still getting over. I stumbled, but Simon caught me before I could fall. You sure you're good? We don't have to go to this party. We can just chill and watch horror movies. Yeah, Victor said, looking at me with concern along with Daniela. No worries, it's just a stupid party. I've been chilling and watching horror movies ever since the surgery, I said, trying to put on a reassuring smile. I need to get out around other people. I'll be fine, just a little uneasy. Once we get a cart, I'll use it to lean on. All right, Simon said, still gripping my arm. Let's do this. The thought of going back home and lying in my bed again was something I couldn't bear, especially not on Halloween night. I'd always been a huge fan of Halloween, and was determined to celebrate it this year. If having a brain tumor had taught me one thing, it was that life was short and I needed to get busy living. We crunched through fallen leaves in the parking lot as a gust of wind picked up, bringing with it the scent of decomposing plant matter and chimney smoke. The wind chilled me through my sweatshirt. My hair was short because it had been shaved for the surgery. The scar went from just above my forehead to just above my right ear. I wasn't supposed to wear a hat until it was fully healed, but I suddenly wanted a beanie for warmth against the chill night air. The store's automatic door slid open, wafting the smell of soft rubber and hard plastic toward us. Victor grabbed a cart and brought it over, and we started into the store. There was a large display straight ahead, 
with a pumpkin-headed scarecrow and a grim reaper, among other decorations. I glanced to the right at the checkout area and had to do a double take when I saw the employee behind the counter. The guy, I assumed it was a guy anyway, was in a super realistic costume. He had the head of a bat, furry with big dark eyes and pointy ears. His body looked like it belonged to some sort of deranged monkey. It was hairy too, and his arms were overly long. He was also short. From my angle, I could see the crate he was standing on to reach the register. His mouth moved as he talked to the customer at the register, but I couldn't hear him from where I was. Damn, that's some costume, I said. My friends followed my gaze. Which one? Daniela asked. The guy at the register, I said, pointing. This was met with silence. I looked toward Daniela, who was sharing a look with Victor. A look that said, I don't think Liam's okay after all. I shrugged it off as we headed further into the store. Another side effect of brain surgery was occasional confusion, but I'd never had straight up hallucinations before. Still, I didn't want my friends to keep worrying about me, so I pushed the cart along. Victor and Daniela split off to look at the animatronics, while Simon and I went to look at the decorations. Leighton, our friend who was throwing the party, asked us to bring some spooky decorations to add to the ones he already had. Most of everyone had done their Halloween shopping long before Halloween night, so there were only a couple of other people in the store with us. Simon selected a light-up stack of three evil-looking jack-o'-lanterns, a couple of bags of fake spider webs, and a couple of three-foot skeletons he was planning to hang from one of the trees in Leighton's backyard. I got a Michael Myers door cover and a gargoyle statue. By the time we met up with Victor and Daniela, we'd covered most of the store. I found this awesome animatronic, Daniela said. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to get it. I'll use it for years. Where is it? Simon asked. It's already up front. We had one of the employees put it up there because the box is a little too big to carry around. Victor showed us the garage door cover he'd selected. It was a foggy graveyard landscape with a bright moon in the background and a creepy grim reaper on the right side. I knew that Simon's garage was set back from the house in the backyard, where the party was taking place, so I figured it would be a good addition. He also had some fake vampire teeth, which he stuck in his mouth. He grabbed Daniela and pretended to suck her blood as she screamed and giggled. <laughs> Dude, some kid probably had those in his mouth already, Simon said. Victor just laughed like Dracula as we headed toward the registers. When we got there, he took the teeth out and left them on a candy display. <laughs> Simon laughed. You're nasty, man. This time, there were two employees at the front, and both of them were in costumes. There was the one I'd already seen, the hairy bat creature, and another one that looked like a goblin. The goblin patted a big box with one long arm and gestured for Victor and Daniela to come forward. They did, and the other one called out. I can help who's next, in a reedy voice. Go for it. Simon said. I shook my head, still staring at the two employees. They were so small, there had to be kids inside the costumes. I couldn't understand it. Simon shrugged, grabbed his items out of the cart, and walked forward to check out. I stood back until my friends were done checking out, then rolled uneasily forward with my purchases in the cart. The bat creature scanned them up and then looked at me with his wide black eyes. Would you like to trade? He asked. As he spoke, I could see his sharp teeth and his tongue. If it was a costume, it was the best one in existence. Trade? I asked, voice barely above a whisper. Yes, he said. Trade, you give me something of yours, and I give you the items. Like what? Like the use of your right arm. I was silent for a moment, trying to clear the fog in my mind. I didn't understand. No, I said finally. No, I just want to pay. How much is it? The creature narrowed his eyes. No, are you sure? Yes, I said, holding up my debit card. How much? The creature sighed and then told me the price. I paid, took my items in their bags, and then joined my friends near the doors. They all looked overjoyed. Dude. 
Simon said. Guess what I paid for this stuff? What? Nothing! Not a dollar! Did you do a trade? I asked with a sick feeling in my stomach. The guy at the counter said he wanted my ability to draw, so I agreed, and he just backed up the stuff and gave it to me. You believe that? I knew drawing was one of Simon's favorite hobbies. He was really good at it too. I figured one day it would be more than a hobby. I traded a memory for mine, Daniela said proudly, gesturing at the large cardboard box Victor had in his arms. A memory? I asked. Yeah, of my first date with Victor. Why would you do that? I asked. None of my friends seemed to hear the question. Victor said he traded his laugh for his items. They were all still chatting as they turned and walked out of the store. I stood there by the doorway and looked over at the registers. Both the employees were standing on their crates behind the counter, staring at me. I shivered and hustled out of the store as fast as my wobbly legs would take me. When we were back in the Explorer and on our way to the party, I leaned forward and spoke to Daniela. So you can still remember your first date with Victor, right? What? Daniela asked. That's a strange question, but yeah, of course I can. It was... She trailed off. Victor looked over at her from the driver's seat. Ouch, babe, that hurts. How could you forget our first date? I didn't, Daniela said. I'm just having one of those moments. Just let me think. We waited for a good two minutes. She said nothing. Do you not remember trading that memory back at the store? I asked her. Trading a memory? Victor said. How the hell would that work? Are you sure you're okay, Liam? I leaned back in my seat and looked out the window. This isn't good, I thought. Little did I know just how bad the night would get before it was over. The animatronic Daniela had bought, traded for actually, was a six foot tall creep with a fake chainsaw. He was plump and wore a pair of bloodstained overalls and a grimy gray sweater. His fat, bald head held a couple of yellow glowing eyes over a cruel and crooked grin. It was motion activated, generating a creepy laugh and a chainsaw noise as the guy moved his arms up and down and his head back and forth. She and Victor set it up at the back corner of the house so partygoers coming down the driveway would be surprised by it as they turned the corner. They also put up the garage door cover with the graveyard scene, while Simon and I put up our decorations around the yard. Layton was making the finishing touches and setting up the kegs. He had picnic tables set up and said the pizza would arrive at nine. There were all kinds of decorations around the yard, some inflatable cartoonish figures, some gruesome chopped limbs, and plenty of carved pumpkins with glow sticks inside. There were also several speakers set up around the yard, playing Halloween-themed music. Simon hung his skeletons from a tree near the picnic tables and then found a plug for his stack of evil-looking jack-o'-lanterns. I put my Michael Myers door cover on the back door and set my gargoyle statue absently at the side of the yard. I couldn't stop thinking about the Halloween store and how strangely my friends had been acting. Inside the store, they'd been talking about their trades like excited kids trading candy after a night of trick-or-treating. But just a minute later, in the SUV, it was like they had no idea what I was talking about. Hey, Liam, Simon said. Put some of these up, will you? He tossed me a bag of fake spider webs. People had started to arrive, so we were just trying to get the last of the decorations up. I nodded, ripped open the plastic bag, and reached inside. Something stung my hand, and I yanked it out, dropping the bag. A large black spider crouched on the back of my hand. I swept it to the ground and stomped on it. As I was looking at the ground, I saw three more spiders crawl out of the bag with the spider webs. I kicked one of them over with the toe of my shoe, noticing the red hourglass on its underside. I stomped on the three remaining spiders and then looked at my hand. I could see two little fang marks, and the area around the bite was already starting to swell. Shit. I said. Black widows? I hustled inside through the back door. In the kitchen, I washed the bite with soap and water. While I was looking at my phone, researching what to do about a black widow bite, I heard a commotion from outside. It was a swell of excited laughter from the dozen or so partygoers who'd arrived. I looked out the kitchen window and saw three jack-o'-lanterns hopping around in the yard. 
Daniela, Victor, and Simon stood near the garage, watching as Leighton and the others laughed at the three ambulatory pumpkins. My gaze dropped to my throbbing hand as the implications seated themselves in my stomach like the tip of a dagger. I ran out of the house and looked toward where Simon had set up the stack of three jack-o'-lanterns he'd purchased. They were gone. These decorations are crazy, Leighton said, <laughs> laughing as he bent down to touch one. No! I screamed, but it was too late. The jack-o'-lantern chomped down on Leighton's hand. Blood spewed out as the thing's sharp teeth tore through his flesh, severing all four of his fingers. Leighton screamed, yanking his hand back as he lurched upright. The other two jack-o'-lanterns quickly attacked other partygoers, latching onto one woman's calf as she tried to run and chomping down on one man's crotch when he tripped to the ground. The three-foot plastic skeleton Simon had hung from the nearby tree suddenly started shaking. They came to life, swiping their bone hands up to sever the strings holding them to the tree. They landed deftly on the grass and then launched themselves at the nearest bystanders. One of them gouged a man's eye out while the other bit a woman's ear off. It all happened so fast. Only moments had passed since Leighton's fingers had been sheared off. A small group of new arrivals came around the corner, all smiles, thinking this was all a joke. Man, Leighton has really gone all out this year, I heard one of them say. Then I realized the chainsaw killer animatronic hadn't been set off by their arrival. Eyes widening in terror, I started that way. Run! I screamed. The sound of the chainsaw cut the night air, but it wasn't the same canned sound that the decoration had been making earlier. It was the sound of a real chainsaw. When I was still 10 feet away, the chainsaw killer lurched at the amazed newcomers, swinging his blade at one man's head. Blood splattered the others in the group as the tool decapitated the man. Screams of terror erupted as they realized this was no joke. It was real. Their friend's still warm blood was all over them, and the chainsaw killer was far from done. I grabbed a string of orange lights hanging from the house and yanked it as I ran toward the killer. I threw a loop of the lights over his head and yanked on it, pulling him back enough to save a screaming woman's life as he slashed at her with a chainsaw. Help! I screamed at my friends, who were seemingly in shock in front of the garage door. The chainsaw killer grunted and pulled forward, trying to go after the now running newcomers. I dug my heels into the ground, trying to buy them some time. Glancing over at the garage to see what my friends were doing, I noticed movement from behind them. Thick white mist seeped out from the garage door cover Victor had bought. It was no longer a two-dimensional decoration. It was real, like all the other decorations they traded for. The Grim Reaper reached out of the scene and grabbed Daniela, yanking her backward into the graveyard. Victor screamed and jumped in after her. Simon ran toward me to help with the chainsaw killer, who was too strong for me to hold on my own. He grabbed one side of the string of lights, and then we both pulled as hard as we could. The chainsaw killer fell backward, the impact knocking his chainsaw out of his hands. Simon and I looked at each other. Hold him! I shouted, giving him the other side of the string of lights as I ran toward the idling chainsaw. As I approached the tool, something grabbed my right leg, causing me to trip. I fell to the grass two feet from the saw. I felt something clamber up my legs and to my back before I pistoned my elbow back, connecting with one of the three-foot skeletons. The creature fell off, but righted itself quickly. As it jumped onto me and shoved its bone fingers toward my face, I noticed one of the chomp-happy jack-o'-lanterns bounding toward my feet. Simon was still struggling to keep the fat chainsaw killer down by pulling on the string of lights. I could hear Daniela screaming and Victor shouting. The rest of the party was in chaos, and most people, those who weren't grievously injured or currently being attacked, had fled as fast as their legs would take them. I got both hands up and wrapped around the skeleton's miniature wrists, keeping the thing from gouging my eyes out. It was shockingly strong, despite the lack of muscles. I gathered as much strength as I could, which wasn't much, and waited until the right moment. As the jack-o'-lantern approached, I flung the skeleton down toward my feet. Its skull went right into the evil pumpkin's stretching maw and shattered as the jack-o'-lantern bit down. I flipped over and crawled to the chainsaw, picking it up as I got to my feet. The chainsaw killer yanked the lights out of Simon's hand and lumbered to his feet just as I located the throttle to make the chain spin. He lunged toward me, his belly swaying and footfalls seeming to shake to the ground. Yelling, I jammed the chainsaw into his belly as his long arms reached out, his powerful hands gripping my head and squeezing. 
My yell turned to a scream as my surgery scar flared painfully. Blood splattered my face as I jammed the chainsaw deeper into his belly and then shoved it down toward his pelvis. When the saw broke free of flesh and bone between his legs, his grip on my head loosened and his hands fell away. He stumbled back and fell down with a thud, leaving a trail of viscera on the grass. But I didn't have time to savor the victory. I looked toward Simon, who was running away from a skeleton and one of the bloodthirsty jack-o'-lanterns. I started after my friend, but Daniela's blood-curdling scream stopped me. I whipped my head toward the garage to see Victor standing in the graveyard with the Grim Reaper's scythe impaling his chest. He looked from the blade in his chest to me and then coughed up blood. The Reaper yanked the scythe out and turned toward Daniela, who was on the ground in the misty graveyard, clutching an injured leg. I sprinted toward the scene, jumping into the graveyard, my movement stirring the mist around my ankles. I dodged around tilting headstones toward my friend. As the Reaper swung his scythe toward Daniela, I reached out with the idling chainsaw, stopping the blade inches from her head. Daniela scrambled out of the way as the Reaper and I struggled. Realizing that the scythe's staff was wood, I hit the throttle. The chain spun, tearing into the wood just below the gleaming blade. The Reaper pulled the scythe up before the chainsaw could cut completely through the staff. Moving as quick as death, it swung the scythe at me. In my weakened state, I knew I couldn't get the chainsaw up in time, so I dodged back. The blade skimmed across my chest, opening a nasty gash just under my collarbone. Gritting my teeth, I stumbled back, stopping as I ran into a stone grave marker. The Reaper swung the scythe at me again, but this time I managed to get the chainsaw up. It didn't do much good. The blade hit it with such force that the chainsaw flew out of my hands, but I thought I heard the wood of the Reaper's tool crack with the impact. Standing before me, the Reaper brought the scythe straight up over its head and then sent it flying down toward me to embed the blade in my skull. I let my legs go limp and dropped down against the gravestone. The scythe came down. The weakened wood of the staff hit the top of the gravestone as the blade sliced down on the other side. A resonant snapping sound told me that my plan had worked. I twisted, reaching around the grave marker, grabbing the top of the scythe that had broken off on impact with the gravestone. With the blade in my right hand, I jumped up and swung it at the reaper's head, slicing through the dark hood at the neck. The black robe went limp and sunk to the ground. The wooden staff fell down on the mist shrouded earth. I dropped the blade and moved over to Victor, who was lying nearby. I felt for a pulse. There was none. He was dead. Remembering the skeletons and jack-o'-lanterns, I stumbled out of the graveyard and into Leighton's backyard. Daniela stood nearby with a tiki torch, which she'd apparently used to smash one of the jack-o'-lanterns to bits. Simon came around the far corner of the house, looking haggard. Are they all dead? I asked. I think so, Simon said. Where's Victor? I shook my head. Daniela started sobbing. Simon muttered something and wiped at his eyes. I looked at the two items I'd bought with money at the Halloween store. They were still just decorations. They hadn't come to life, just as I'd suspected. It was only the ones that my friends traded for that came alive. Simon called 911 and all of us sat at a picnic table with a first aid kit retrieved from inside Leighton's house. We dressed our wounds and waited for the police and paramedics to show up. I wonder if this has happened anywhere else tonight, Simon said. I bet it has, I said. That Halloween store, there was something up with it. Do you guys remember? I remember going there, Simon said, but I don't recall anything strange about it. I shook my head, knowing it had something to do with my brain surgery. Something had changed in my head, allowing me to see those things at the store for what they really were. You want to know something funny, Liam? Daniela asked. I shrugged. I guess I could use something funny. I just realized that's the second time you've beat death this year. I snorted and couldn't help but smile. I guess so. <laughs> Simon chuckled. We heard the sirens approaching, so we struggled up from our seats and headed out toward the front of the house. But as we rounded the corner, we heard screams and then gunshots. Bringing the street into view, we saw a small army of zombies, skeletons, ghosts, spiders, and various other Halloween decorations attacking the police officers who just pulled up. They ripped the officers apart and then turned their attention toward us. 
As we turned and ran toward Leighton's back door, I didn't think it was likely that I would be able to beat death a third time. The inspiration for this story comes from SCP-2523 and the SCP Foundation archives. If you liked this story, there are plenty more like it on my other podcast, The SCP Experience. I publish regular episodes, so be sure to subscribe or follow for updates on new horror episodes on the SCP Experience podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy these stories, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out some more of my episodes here.